But Anadrol is irreplaceable for me. Now, some people like Pete Rubish says he doesn't never responded to Anadrol. He likes Trembolone. Almost everybody I know got, I get crazy strong on Anadrol. Crazy. If I take Anadrol 10 days in a row, I'm a different person 10 days later. It's unbelievable. So for me, Superdrol I love Anadrol. Is even better. Oh, yeah. Superdrol is even better. Should we discuss pre-workout androgens? Yeah, that would be a fun uh, topic. Because for me, I was uh, like, from what I've seen in terms of anandrol's tissue selectivity. Now, again, it's not like I have a whole lot of uh, factual data to reference here. I'm just kind of basing it off from what I've seen personally. Dianable acts as an HRT replacement at, if I recall correctly, 10 milligrams per day if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure the androgenic potential of it is replacing therapeutic endogenous production at 10 milligrams per day. Anadrol, I don't see it that much more problematic in an androgenicity context at 10 milligrams per day in terms of comparing it to Dianabol's, you know, 5-alpha reduction to methyl testosterone and its inherent parent compound activity. So what I'm wondering is Anadrol, first of all, I don't think anyone knows what the half-life is. I think we all speculate we know what it is, but I don't think anyone actually yeah. knows. Mm -hmm. So I know Dianabol half-life is pretty fucking short, though. Like, it's shorter than Anivar. It's shorter than what the bro forums that made up a half-life for Anadrol say the Anadrol half-life is. So if Dianabol is more androgenic milligram for milligram, at least maybe, I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying from what I've seen, it might be. Um, and it has a shorter half-life, so it's effects are more acute and concentrated why is it not more effective as a pre-workout androgen than something like an anadrol like why do you get so much more sympathetic drive from an anadrol than you do dianabol is it the progestogenic activity or like what is uh what's going on there like it sounds like in my head i'm thinking dianabol seems like a reasonable choice as a pre-workout androgen but practical application does not seem to translate as well as something like an anadrol what do you think steve how's your experience with dianabol and anadrol Man, I haven't used the anabol in a while, but there, I mean, with these, a lot of these pre-workout uh, steroids, there is, some of them have an immediate effect and some of them are more pronounced than others, but like not everything goes through the androgen receptor pathway. And then there's, no, they like, all have minimal affinity for AR. So they were right. working through like non-genomic actions, I would think, but then so it's is like, it, is that the, the you know, genomic the actions, but maybe at other receptors also. Yeah, maybe the sexual binding globulin receptor complex sending a cyclic one assigned monophosphate activity within the cell. And that, that starts a cascade of events as well, increases energy production. So maybe there's different affinity for the sexual binding globulin, which then sends signals um, into the cell. And and that's also a lot of new science, right? So so maybe, maybe that's part of the pathway or attaching to the estrogen receptor. But and forgetting about been the speculated, science, uh, practically. Right? Which did you find the anabol? Did did you ever use them much as pre workouts? They weren't your favorites because they're harmful, maybe. No, the anabol just gives you a lot of water retention and then yeah, extra uh, estradiol. And like with the anadrol, you would assume that it's attaching to the estrogen receptor and get a little bit of gynecomastia symptoms. But I never found that to be true if your estradiol and uh, prolactin and progesterone levels are in range. So I, I would always favor anadrol over the anabol on a milligram for milligram basis and, and yeah, the power just, output. I remember watching a video of yours maybe five years ago. You were talking about anadrol with Tony, right? Yeah. In, oh, uh, that's the, the first time I saw you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember. I was, wow. I was still, I was still baked friend. by then. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I was still baked by then. Wow. So, so as a pre-workout, I would You're favor anadrol. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I would favor anadrol over the anabol. Um, I, I like there's there's old compounds, right, that are somehow still favored. Uh, but there's new steroids out there that are like I would I would consider superdrol nowadays over anadrol also. Of course, it's more toxic. It. I've never. Oh used man, it's it. it's yeah. a shiznit. I've but heard it's toxic. Right? It's very toxic. I've heard it's, it's basically a super anadrol, like more. Yeah, toxic that's why they call it like that. Yeah. Quicker. And, yeah. and you can't use it. For, and then yeah. the weird thing is the appetite suppression is not that bad. So you can still eat. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. From my experience and all my clients, I say, oh, I can still eat on Superdrol. Or maybe you can it's push really it to 50 weird. milligrams. It's one of those paradoxical compounds where the androgenicity, at least what you get from it in a performance context, is contradictory to what it does on your head, it seems. So yeah. it's one of the most hair safe compounds 
anecdotally that I've seen. Mm. Obviously, no clinical like my, evidence. My most people, that. most people run it for very short periods. Like their anadrol is like a four week use use uh, period, and Superdrol two weeks. And the anabol people run for like eight weeks, ten weeks, twelve weeks at a time. Yeah, but know, because like, they can still add when in the loop. Use like a big dose of anadrol. Like you'll notice shedding like pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Like if you're if you're prone, and then with yeah. Superdrol, not really. Maybe, Even if maybe you're not because... prone, to be honest, if you use enough anadrol, you'll go bald. Uh, if you look at all the yeah, power, sure. they're all bald. Yeah. My, yeah, my I'm sure, I'm sure. Too, yeah. I mean, maybe because the efficacious dose of Superdrol is almost half of that of anadrol. You know, most guys would run 20 to 30 mil. 20 to 30 yeah, I think there's definitely a point of like, like I definitely noticed this with the uh, injectable SARMs experiment. Well, actually, I don't know if that's the best example, but a lot of these drugs really like lose their tissue selectivity at certain dosages. So it's yeah. maybe it's just that the effective dose is like, you just happen to be using less than when you've hit that threshold that your body can no longer tolerate and you start having side interactions like all over the place with hair loss right. and a bunch of shit going on. Exactly. So, so there's, there's, I always feel that there's a life cycle for pre-workout orals and, and you would only use them in cases where you actually need them. Uh, now, nowadays people pack them like candies, right? But if you get into a position where you're eating a ton of food and you can't gain any more strength, then, then maybe you throw in an oral, you know, for a particular period of time and you push past that strength plateau and then you take a break hmm. and then you, you know, you reach the, you raise the bar for yourself, but it's, you know, besides a low dose of Anivar, which I'm still fa in favor of, you know, five milligrams per day for the collagen synthesis and, um, you know, the, the mind muscle connection that it induces. Hmm. That's the only oral I would use long term. Okay. But if there's so, an, you know, let's, a, let's, the, the, the way I was thinking about it when I made my video wasn't really about Anadrol or Dianabol. I was thinking about the idea of, so, like there are some people taking like my friend and my buddy that was taking 10,000 you know, milligrams of testosterone all the time at night he has maximal androgen levels in the morning he has maximal androgen levels who's you get in and out of your system quick who's yeah. paying for it his kidneys what i was thinking is a short acting compound around your workout that's what i used to use personally i used to use testosterone no ester and i used to use anadrol personally I used to use some a very small amount of anadrol, 100 milligrams of testosterone no ester usually on my most important workout days, usually around three days a week. It tremendous. I was a, I was a strength guy, so my only interest was what I was lifting. It tremendously improved my gains. I, I mean, for me now, I assume bodybuilders, you guys gain muscle by being stronger over time too. So I do think that being stronger in the gym must cause more muscle synthesis over time. But I wasn't meaning to say that the most harsh uh, you know, orals should be used necessarily by everyone. Now, as a strength guy myself, Anadrol is, I've never tried Superdrol, but Anadrol is irreplaceable for me. Now, some people like Pete Rubish says he doesn't never responded to Anadrol. He likes Trembolone. Almost everybody I know got, I get crazy strong on Anadrol. Crazy. If I take Anadrol 10 days in a row, I'm a different person 10 days later. It's unbelievable. So for me, Superdrol I love Anadrol. Is even better. Oh, yeah. Superdrol is even better. You're just I might have doing to, max I might have lifts. to trial it and make a video on it as an excuse. So. Yeah, get but, a get a testosterone base. Yeah, but no, well, we'll see about that. But the, but the thing, <laughs> what I was what I was trying to say though is, I discovered later, you know, I avoided Anavar the whole time I was using steroids. I mean, I took it sometimes, but I I avoided because I was like, why would I take this female hormone when if it's an oral, it's gonna damage my liver anyway. I'm gonna take the Anadrol so I can get stronger. Well, later I try to, I get a couple subscribers that have liver cancer and I try to find out how do androgens cause liver cancer? Well, I find out residence time at the liver and androgenic nature. Trenbolone caused a lot of liver cancers, case studies all over, including my subscriber. Anadrol did too, a lot. A lot of other steroids did, testosterone did. Uh, I've never found an incidence of Anavar doing that. Anavar seems to be not androgenic enough, even though it has a long residence time in the liver because it's an oral. So personally, I find Anadrol to be a great drug and my idea wouldn't be that as somebody would take it every day. I also like the idea of not getting used to the drug. So my idea would be like on your on your back day or on your leg day, and 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 then on other days maybe you would take testosterone no ester or something like that. That's my harm reduction idea. But by the way, about the anadrol half life, I have a feeling it's a bit longer, because I stay strong for about a day or so when I take a pill. Maybe a little bit longer than that. 
So, but and my experience with Dianabol was it's just an antidepressant that makes me look like a bloated cow or something. Like I, I, I used to, be, I, I take a couple of Anadrols. I remember once I went to the LA Fitness Expo and I didn't have, I don't know why, I only had Dianabols at the time. So I took some Dianabols and I went there. I see my pictures. My face was so bloated. I don't know what I looked like. Just, fa- just a fat guy. I just looked like a fat guy. For me, it's, it's horrible. It doesn't make me stronger, but it makes me very happy. Like I get in a feel very, mood. very good. Yeah. yeah. But a good mood, Which I'm feel- killing my liver for this good mood. I don't want that. I want to say it doesn't, it doesn't make you stronger. Not much. Does. Not much. Oh, it did. Really? Yeah. Not the compared to Anadrol. Like, hilarious. Yeah, of course. For me, Anadrol is at least like three or four times more effective for powerlifting. What causes the D ball back pumps? That's a good, uh, quick little subtopic. Taurine deficiency. I really? I, I don't know. You like, supplement these guys with taurine, 5,000 to 10,000 milligrams per day, and the back pumps go away. It's the extracellular fluid in the lower back, and you get the same uh, during carpal tunnel. Oh, retention just, from the mineral corticoid receptors. You probably retain yeah. more salt immediately. Right. So you, you alleviate that with taurine, which helps with the extracellular water and helps to disperse that. I mean, it's not a, it's not a fix for everything, but in most cases, guys that run a, a decent dose of taurine, no carpal tunnel and no lower back pumps. And if it still persists, okay, you either deal with it or you lower the dose or take the Dianabol out. Isn't it weird that that's like the one water retentive compound that seems to cause like localized back pumps though? Versus no, anadrol. Like- yeah, anadrol makes it. Anadrol also. Yeah, you can't get up. Anadrol also. Oh, my can't God. Can't even do the dishes, you know? Oh, my God. Can't even do the yeah. dishes. Yeah, you walk around, you start thinking you have kidney disease. Like, because you're back. Yeah. <laughs> you have such a back pump. You start worrying about your kidneys. That's crazy. Right. So, so that guy who took 10,000, by the way, he used to take 20 Anadrols a day sometimes on competition days. 20. Legitimately. What happened? Uh, what's he doing now? He's still dropping like bars on his chest. 1,000 pounds bench press. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, we might have to cut that. But all right. Okay. So, but I wanted to mention something. Okay, this is really off topic. But have you guys noticed that there is a tremendous amount of Egyptian bodybuilders in bodybuilding with great talent suddenly? There's Rami. There's Hassan Mustafa. There's this guy called